how I've lost money to the tune of potentially five to $10 million. What's up everybody, Rick Fan here. Welcome to the Fan of Life channel, Fan of Life show. And yes, that is not a fake catchphrase intro. I really potentially have lost five to $10 million. And let me explain, but before we get into it, you guys know what to do. Make sure you guys hit subscribe, give it a like, share with your friends and family so we can continue to grow this channel. So how do I end up losing or potentially losing five to $10 million? Well, let me break it down. Some of you guys that have been following me, you guys know that my venture into business or entrepreneurship is based around real estate and real estate investing. What most people don't know is that this is my third girl around in terms of trying to be a real estate entrepreneur. My very first time was back in 2000, back when I was living in Sacramento, California. Silly as it sounds, I saw an infomercial to learn how to flip properties with no money down. I bought a course and ended up doing two deals quite quickly. And the deals were done through the process known as assignment or wholesaling, meaning that I look for bad distressed properties, I get it under contract for X amount of price, and then I sell the contract off to someone else for the spread in the middle. And I was able to do two deals and net up myself $8,000 with zero money out of pocket. So that process does work. Now I want you to remember 8,000 bucks is good money, but it was really, really good money in 2000. That was 21 years ago. Now you would think someone smart or someone motivated would say, Hey, this is something really unique. I got something here. I'm going to keep going. But instead I can't tell you what I did with the 8,000 bucks. And I can't tell you why I stopped then and there. And it wasn't until many years later when life took me to Las Vegas that I re-engaged back into the real estate world. This time it was around 2005. Now, some of you guys have been through 07, 08 and you're still alive, you know where this may be going. So back in 2005, if you had a light pulse and a light heartbeat, you can get a mortgage. I was making probably less than $40,000 a year but through the process of fraudulent, let's not say fraudulent, let's just say bad loans, loan practices, I was able to buy two homes valued at $700,000. In other words, somehow along the way, the bank said, hey kid, you make less than 40 grand a year? Sure, no problem, we'll give you a couple loans worth of $700,000. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. This was known as the subprime loan era, where again, if you had a pulse, you can get a loan and I took advantage of it. Now, this was my attempt at trying to be a real estate mogul. The challenge is I had no plan, no skill set, no mentor, nothing to help me understand how this would play out. And unfortunately, this happened to a lot of people during this era too. And if you understood history or if you lived through it, you realize that around 07, 08, the cards start crumbling down because a lot of these loans were not qualified properly like mine. And a lot of these loans were done on a five year arm, meaning that you would get a very low interest payment only payment for the first five years. And then come year six, that payment would quadruple, if not 10 X sometimes based on the raise of interest rate at the time. So my properties went from a 4% interest rate to 15% overnight. And I, again, was not alone. Thus started the domino effect of the collapse of the housing market. I want you to picture the savviness of who I was as a business person back in 05. Again, making less than 40 grand a year. I had two mortgages. I bought and paid on interest only, meaning that I would never pay down the principal. And on top of that, I structured the loan with the five year arm as previously described. So all that genius movement led me to eventually having to lose my home. That was hard because as you guys know, most of us guys, we live through ego. And if you ever want a punch in the gut, watch somebody take away your home and your asset. And it, it puts an imprint in your mind. And I figured it could do one of two things, either deter me or really motivate me to try again and do it right. And of course, many things have transpired between 2007 and now. And this time around, when I decided to get back into the real estate game, I purposely studied, sought out mentors, and reached out for help. And because I understand the life lessons of before, I'm structuring my business very differently. I no longer buy at the top of the market. Everything I buy have 
an equity position in it when it's all said and done. Everything I buy and do is put into a pool for a purpose. So if I make cash on the flip, that cash is for a purpose. It may be to buy rentals or it may be to fund other flips along the way. In other words, I'm not just buying assets to hold on to assets and say I have stuff. I'm buying assets to continue to generate income. So going back to what I was telling you before, I did a calculation of when I first got into real estate in 2000 and made that $8,000 and the money that I lost from those bad deals through the course of 21 years, if I kept the same pace and growth of what I'm doing now, I projected that I probably left on the table anywhere between five and $10 million. Not tangible income because I never made it, but potential income that I could have had if I went down the right path. So I guess in short, the whole purpose of this video is twofold. It's to share with you a little bit about the roadblocks and the mistakes and the challenges that everybody goes through and to stress the point of two things. Number one, if you're gonna go into a different venture or try something new, be sure to understand the industry, learn the ins and outs, get yourself a mentor and get some guidance. And then number two, which is probably most important, is that no matter how bad things have gotten or how life has let you down, you can always climb back up. You just gotta keep fighting. And for me, I really have a passion for real estate. I screwed up big time the first two go around, but this time I've committed to do it right and see it through. So if nothing else, I hope that message stays clear to you guys. I share this because I want you to feel and understand that if I can do it, you can too. So with much love, continue and much success. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other. And I'll see you guys on the next video.